Hey guys, welcome to my channel Economics at a Glance. So today's topic is Elasticity Measurement Methods. Well, we have covered what is elasticity, types of elasticity and the degrees of elasticity. So today we will move to how, how much methods are there through which we can measure elasticity. Okay, so first one is proportionate method and percentage method which we have already covered in the first lecture. Still, if you have not seen that lecture, you can get it easily through the description box because I have mentioned the link in the description box. Okay, so next is the total outlay and expenditure method which we will cover in this lecture. The next two methods are geometric method which we otherwise call as point elasticity. Why? We will deal with that. And the last one is arc elasticity. Okay, so there are four methods. First one percentage proportionate method. Total outlay expenditure method, geometric method and arc elasticity method. Okay, so today we will deal with only one method that is total outlay and expenditure method. Okay, so let's rub this because we have already covered this one. Okay, and this two geometric and arc elasticity we will cover in the next lecture. So coming to total outlay and expenditure method, before moving to how we will measure the elasticity, let's first know that how we will calculate total expenditure. How we are calculating the total expenditure? Total expenditure is equals to price into quantity. That means when you went to market to purchase any commodity, the unit price into the amount of unit you have purchased will give you the total expenditure. Okay, suppose you have you are you went to market and to purchase a shoe. Okay, and the shoe price is two fifty per piece or per unit. Okay, two fifty per unit, and you have purchased three shoes. Let's say, let's say, or say four shoes. Okay, you have purchased four shoes. And each shoe is 250 rupees. So your total expenditure will be price that is 250 into the unit that is 4. That will be 1000 rupees. So you have done your total expenditure that is 1000 rupees. Okay. So in this way we are measuring total expenditure. So here what happened our total concern is previously what we have done. Like when the price changes, how much change occurred in the quantity demand? Yes or no? So in that form, we are measuring elasticity. But here our concern is when price changes, how much change occurred in total expenditure? Okay, total expenditure change in that form, we will measure the elasticity. How? See, I have taken three cases. Just a minute. Here I have taken three cases. See the first case. When the price has been declined from 5 to 6. Sorry not declined it is increased. When the price has been increased from 5 to 6 rupees. That means initially it was 5 rupees. Now it has been increased to 6 rupees. Okay. So what happened? Our expenditure initially because we are not concerning the change in quantity. So, we will not concern about that. We will concern about total expenditure. So, initially it was 30. Okay. Price has been increased. But our new total expenditure is same 30 rupees. See, same 30 rupees. There is no change in total expenditure. So, whenever you get this kind of cases like after the change in price also, there is no change in total expenditure. In that case, your elasticity will be 1. Okay. When your elasticity will be 1, the degree of elasticity is called, I have already discussed, unitary elastic. Okay. Unitary elastic. Okay. Fine. So, what is the value of unitary elastic? 1. That is why in this case, the elasticity will be unitary elastic. Next case, see. In the second case, we will see price has been declined from 6 to 5. Okay. Initially, it was 6 rupees. Now, it has been decreased to 5 rupees. Okay. So, when price has been declined from 6 to 5, so price changes 1 unit. Price change has been done by 1 unit. Here, my total expenditure initially was 60. Now, it has been increased 
to 75. That means it has increased by 15 units. See, one unit change in price will give rise to 15 units change in total expenditure. That means a small change will give rise to large change in total expenditure. Yes or no? That means here elasticity will be greater than 1. In which case elasticity is greater than 1? When the elastic is, sorry, it is more elastic or relatively elastic. Why it is relatively elastic? See, in the second case what happens? When price has been declined, total expenditure has been increased. When price decreased, total expenditure increased. Yes or no? 6 to 5 but it has increased from 60 to 75. And this 1 unit will respond to 15 units. Okay. And similarly when price have, will increase, it will give rise to total expenditure decrease. Okay. So this is the result why it is more elastic or relatively elastic you can say. And the elasticity value is more than 1. Okay, fine. Unitary elastic, more elastic. Then the third case. See, third case what happens? Price has been declined from 6 to 5. Same case. Price has been decreased from 6 rupees to now 5 rupees. Okay. So what happened with that? Initially the total expenditure was 60 rupees. But in the second case, when the price has been decreased, it became 55 rupees. That means... Price decreases, total expenditure also decreases and that too by 5 units. That, okay, 1 unit decrease in price will give rise to decrease in total expenditure by 5 units. So what happens here? When price decreases, total expenditure decreases. When price increases, total expenditure increases. Okay, so what happened here? A one unit change will give rise to change in only 5 units. And it is not responding. Price is decreasing. But expenditure is also decreasing. So in this case you can say elastic, elasticity is less than 1. In which case we will tell elasticity less than 1. It is less elastic. Less elastic. Okay. So, these are the three cases where we can measure first one unitary elastic, where it can be more elastic and where it can be less elastic only by seeing the total expenditure. Okay. So, more elastic in which case you can have more elastic say. Let's say it is like a small change in price will go on change in quant sorry, total expenditure in a larger extent. That means when price will decrease, Total expenditure will increase in larger amount. See, when the jewelry price, okay, let's take an example of jewelry. When jewelry price has been decreased by a small unit, like uh, this lockdown period, it was somewhat like 8,000. Yes or no? Suppose it will decrease to 5,000, only 3,000 decrease in price. What is the response of women? They will purchase more and more jewelry. Why? Because they thought of that in the recent future, May or may not be we can get in this, this much price. Yes or no? So they will, they will go for purchasing more and more amount of jewelry. Okay, so this is the nature of people like when the price decreases by small unit, they will go for doing expenditure in larger amount. Okay, the next case in which case we can have less elastic. See, uh, we can take example of salt or matchbox. See, so let's take an example of salt. Normal salt which you are using in home. Let's say salt price is how much? 20 rupees per packet. And you need to have 2 packets for a month consumption. For total month. Now I will say the price of that salt packet has been declined to 15 rupees. That means 5 rupees decrease in the price. But do you think with this 5 rupees decrease in price you will go for purchasing 100 packets of salt? What you will do of that? No use. Only you can have hardly from 2 to 3 packets of salt. Not more than that. That means even your price has been changed by 5 units. Your consumption is not increasing more. Okay. So in that case it is less elastic. That means less than 1. More elastic greater than 1. And unitary elastic equals to 1. 
So in this way, we can measure elasticity through the total outlay and expenditure method. So this is all about this method. In next uh, lecture, I will cover the geometric method and the arc elasticity method. Till then, stay with my channel and don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. Thank you.